Today I'm going to talk about alcohol and when I say alcohol, yes, I mean ethanol, booze, liquor, the stuff that goes in many drinks. Humans have been ingesting alcohol for tens of thousands of years and virtually every culture seems to have cottoned on to fermentation of liquids at some point in time. It is part of our history, customs, religion and social institutions. However, there is a dark side to alcohol and it is often considered the most harmful drug on the planet. So let's delve into this enigmatic substance. If you remember your high school chemistry, you remember that alcohol is a fairly simple molecule made up of two carbon atoms surrounded by five hydrogen atoms and a hydroxyl group. However, despite being a simple molecule, the effects on humans are very complex and still not fully understood. When alcohol is swallowed, it passes down the gastrointestinal tract and is quickly absorbed into the bloodstream. Within minutes, it can be present in areas throughout the body. It's designed to enter the mouth and go directly to the stomach where it is distributed to the bloodstream. That's actually not too far from the truth. Most alcohol absorption actually happens in the small intestine, hence a full stomach will slow down absorption as the passage to the small intestine is slowed. Because alcohol is a small uncharged molecule like water, it can move readily through the body, including across cell membranes by diffusion. Once alcohol is in the bloodstream, it travels about freely and enters the cells of different bodily organs. Even the blood-brain barrier, which stops many drugs and other toxins, is no obstacle to alcohol and it passes easily into the brain. Alcohol settles mostly into the water spaces of the body, rather than the fat tissue. This is why females with their typically higher body fat proportion will often have higher blood alcohol concentrations than males after ingesting the same amount of alcohol. I'm not going to get into all the chemical details of alcohol metabolism, but it generates a fair amount of energy before it is broken down to water and carbon dioxide. Most of it has to be metabolized. In fact, only 2 to 10% of alcohol is excreted directly through the lungs, urine or sweat. Something to keep in mind if you're watching your calorie intake. It is also interesting to note that while ethanol gives the effects that might be considered pleasurable, its metabolite acetaldehyde has been implicated in the unpleasant effects of the hangover. Although alcohol was frequently dispensed by physicians of old for all sorts of ailments, it doesn't really have many uses as a drug in modern medicine. However, it is commonly used as an antiseptic, usually at a concentration of around 70%, and can be used as an antidote for methanol poisoning. The effects of alcohol in the short term are well known to many of us and are fairly well correlated to the blood alcohol concentration, or BAC. Starting with mild effects of relaxation and feeling good at a back of 0.05 or 0.05 grams of alcohol per 100 mils of blood through to significant impairment and vomiting at 0.08 to 0.15 through to potential death at around 0.30. And all over the world there are millions of sufferers of the dreaded hangover, often resulting from overindulgence the night before. The long term effects of alcohol depend on exposure and of course individual variation. In the long term, alcohol is capable of damaging almost every part of the body, and its negative effects can extend into multiple socioeconomic realms. Alcohol dependence is another problem and a whole topic in itself, but what about potential benefits of alcohol consumption? Isn't a moderate intake beneficial for the cardiovascular system? Many studies have shown a 25-40% to 40 reduction in heart attacks and ischemic strokes in males and females who drink moderately, so two drinks a day. Drinking small amounts spread out is better than drinking the equivalent amount in one or two days. Even one drink of alcohol a day increases the risk of breast cancer in women, and at two to five drinks a day, the risk of breast cancer increases by around 40%. While some people say there is no safe level of alcohol consumption at a population level, others say this ignores potential social benefits and freedom of choice. In the end, there are plenty of grey areas, so a discussion about alcohol with your health practitioner could be useful. In anticipation of the comment section, I thought I'd answer the question about hangover cures for those hopefully isolated incidents of overindulgence. 
It is interesting to observe that throughout history, herbal recipes are mentioned frequently as hangover cures. While many of them are likely to be cod swallop, there was an interesting study in 2015 looking at the effects of the herb mixture DTS-20 following alcohol consumption. It was a small study but showed that DTS-20 decreased the blood alcohol level in subjects and enhanced antioxidant levels. It may provide some encouragement for researchers to investigate some of the other fabled herbal remedies. However, there is a sure fire way to avoid a hangover and the detrimental effects on your body. It is what I always recommend, the eternal wisdom to drink in moderation or not at all if that works best for you. So give this video a like if you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button for new videos every single week and hit the bell to get notified when I post new videos on Tuesdays. Please let me know in the comments what you want to learn more about next. Thanks for stopping by.